Hi guys, it's Trevor, and this is Discovering Gay History. I am currently recording this. Uh, I believe it's day six of the Black Lives Matter protests. I'm going to put in the links below some places to donate, some petitions to sign, some things to do that you can do from the comfort of your own home if you don't feel um, moved to join a protest or safe to join a protest. That's totally fine. There are totally things you can do, uh, and I'm going to put them below. Okay, that's all I have to say. Here we go. All right, today is for Harry Hay. This is a wild one, so buckle up. So Harry Hay was born in 1912 and is most famous for uh, establishing the Madison Society, which is the first long-term gay rights organization. So in 1925, Harry worked on a cargo ship where he had his first homosexual relationship with uh, a sailor on the ship. And um, through their conversation and sexual experience, uh, Harry discovered that homosexual men were this this like secret global organization. And that's sort of what planted the seed for the Madison Society in, in a few years to come. So Harry Hay went to Stanford where he studied law for a few years. There he discovered the gay cruising scene and uh, gay subculture. So in the 1930s, Harry began to attend same-sex dances. Uh, he began to drink alcohol, the scandal. He also had a sexual relationship with the Prince of Kent, Prince George. I mean, this guy, one, got around, two, his, his life is like some spy romance novel. It is wild. So in 1932, Harry got pretty sick and he had to drop out of college. He moved to LA and he became a voiceover actor and a screenwriter for a little while. So while he was working and meeting people in LA, he started another relationship with Will Gear, who you might know from The Waltons. In 1934, Harry and Will joined the Communist Party, uh, despite their position on homosexuality. They did not agree with homosexuality, they considered it part of the bourgeois, which maybe that's not a lie. The Communist Party had such an influence on Harry and his beliefs that in 1938, through pressure from the Communist Party, Harry married a woman named Anna. Throughout the entirety of their marriage, Harry continued to have sexual relationships with men. In 1940, um, he participated in a study with Dr. Alfred Kinsey. You might be familiar with the Kinsey scale. So at a party in 1948, Harry conceived this idea of a gay men's homosexual group. Uh, he floated this idea around while everyone was drunk at this party and, and was calling it The Call. Um, however, the next day when he went to make some moves on creating this group, all the men who seemed interested were suddenly uninterested. But despite that, on November 11th, 1950, Harry Hay and three other gentlemen had the first meeting of the Madison Society. Fun fact, it was first called Society of Fools and was named the Madison Society in 1951, the following year. Harry later informed the communist group that he was a part of, of the, the formation of the Madison Society, and they expelled him from the party. Um, they did not accept homosexual members, um, but they did for the rest of of their time and their relationship with Harry, they did refer to him as a friend of the people. Now the Madison Society really took off when a founding member was arrested for lewd behavior. So the Madison Society was able to leverage that case to, to argue police entrapment for homosexual men. Um, and it actually worked. So the way that they won this case was Jennings, a founding member of the Madison Society, admitted to being homosexual. But he insisted that he was not guilty of the specific charge, and the jury voted 11 to 1 in favor of acquittal, and the judge dismissed the charges. And the Madison Society declared it a victory. Huge. Harry Hayes' position on sexuality, on homosexuality, was that he did not believe that homosexuals should assimilate. So a lot of movements, early movements, uh, the Daughters of Belitis, for example, wanted 
homosexuals to assimilate into heteronormative society. And Harry was decades ahead of his time by saying that as a sexual minority, we should not assimilate into what people expect us to be. He said this, I never want to be mistaken for a hetero. Same girl, <laughs> same. So after Stonewall, Harry was able to assist in the foundation of the Gay Liberation Front in LA. And by 1971, Harry was living in Albuquerque and was setting up a, a gay community there. He, he set up the first gay pride parade in Albuquerque. He set up the Lambdas, which is an LGBTQ focused uh, support group. And in 1979, Harry established the Spiritual Conference of Radical Fairies. Hell yeah, sign me up, let's go. So 220 men showed up to the first gathering and they would participate in workshops called fairy circles and they would discuss things like nutrition and botany and massage and gay politics. It sounds like a gay old time to me. Harry died in 2002 from lung cancer. He is one of the 50 names on the Stonewall Wall of Honor and you should go check it out, just like all of the other names that I've talked about on this series. Harry, you're doing the work, girl. Damn. Hey, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share. All right, we'll see you tomorrow.